This video brought to you by jadedpainting.com. If you need your miniatures painted to a tabletop standard, check out jadedpainting.com. Hey everyone, welcome back to part two of my in-depth review of the new Dark Angels Codex. As you can see, right here. Very nice. Ooh. So far, I've just gone over some of the new cool rules and that uh, the overall trends I've found, as well as my first impressions of the, uh, the codex. And as I mentioned in the previous video, there are a lot of new rules and a lot of the models in the codex got cheaper, other than a couple. And today, for this video, I'm gonna be focusing specifically on the HQs, who will be leading the Dark Angels to victory in sixth edition. So, Let's go straight to the HQs and find out a little bit about them. Now the really odd thing about the HQs is the fact that the Dark Angels only have access now to two different troops, being Tactical Marines and Scouts, but in this Codex they have about 10 HQs, and some of these HQs will unlock various groups to make them troops. For example, um, if you bring Azrael, the Ravenwing Attack Squadrons or Deathwing Terminator Squads become troop choices. Or if you bring Malayal, Deathwing Terminator Squads are troop choices. Um, if you bring Samuel, the Ravenwing become troop choices. And so forth. So there's a bunch of HQs, as you can see here. Here's the Codex. And here is the, I'm just gonna zoom out. Here is the codex. And here are all the HQs. Page after page after page of the HQs. So let's go in a little bit in depth, compare them to the previous codex and see uh, how these new HQs are faring. So first we'll start off with Azrael, who of course is the perfect one you want to start off with when you talk about Dark Angels. And Azrael in the previous codex was about 225 points, and now he is 215 points. So he actually got 10 points cheaper, which is excellent. He comes with uh, frag grenades and crack grenades. His statistics are weapon skill 6, ballistic skill 5, strength 4, toughness 4, wounds 4, Initiative 5, Attacks 4, Leisure 10, and of course he's in Terminator Armor, so he's a 2 plus save. Very nice. And, yeah. And he has uh, Chapter Elks, he has Protector, Lion's Wrath, Sword of Secrets, and Lion Helm. Okay, so let's turn straight to the page of Azrael. And you will see that he has several Chapter Relics. All those chapter relics are located here. And the first one is Lion Helm, which confers a four plus invulnerable save to Azrael and his unit. So it's the equivalent of an iron halo, except it gives it to the entire unit. That's pretty sweet. Uh, Lion's Wrath is a combi weapon with a mastercraft special rule with a secondary plasma gun, which is 24 inches, strength 7, AP2, rapid fire, blind, gets hot, mastercrafted. So it's a, yeah, just a combi plasma, very cool. Uh, Protector gives Azrael the Feel No Pain special rule, but it's a six plus Feel No Pain as opposed to the normal five plus Feel No Pain. And Sword of Secrets is a strength, uh, gives two plus strength, AP3, and it's melee and master crafted. So in the end, actually, he's going to be strength six when he attacks, so that's pretty sweet. So coming at 215 points, that's actually a really good deal for Azrael. Um, he's pretty cheap when it comes to, he's a big slayer, he's four wounds. He doesn't have Eternal Warrior, so he can be instant killed by anything toughness for uh, eight and above, because he's a Space Marine. But he does make a lot of things troop choices, which is pretty sweet. And he has a lot of relics, so he can do really well. And he'll have a, he has a four plus invul save, a, five, a six plus feel no pain, and he gives his entire squad uh, and four plus involved too, so that's pretty sweet. So first off, starting with Azrael, excellent. Next we have Ezekiel. Now Ezekiel 
um, I believe there's a very old model of the Ezekiel. I don't think there's one in the new um, one of the new models for it. But we'll go to Ezekiel next. Now Ezekiel is at 145 points base. Uh, the previous codex Ezekiel actually came out at 170, so it's already 25 point drop. Another great addition. He's weapon skill five, ballistic skill five, strength toughness four, wounds three, initiative five, three attacks, leadership ten, and he's of course a two plus armor as well. He has a mastercrafted bolt pistol, frag grenades, crack grenades, and a psychic hood because he is a super psychic. So he does have a psychic hood, which is great if you want to, you know, avoid your enemy using offensive psychic powers. For his chapter, uh, for his chapter relics, he has Traitor's Bane and Book of Salvation. And Book of Salvation says, so long as Ezekiel lives, all friendly Dark Angel units within six inches of him fight with righteous vigor, adding one to their weapon skill characteristics. So that's great. Adding him into a squad alone basically bumps up all their weapon skills up to five or even possibly six, which means they'll be hitting on threes almost all the time, unless they're against something really, really scary. And second, Traitor's Bane is a sword with the strength of the user, AP3, Melee, it's a force sword, it's mastercrafted, and it's two-handed. Interesting. Okay. And Ezekiel is an independent character. He has Inner Circle. And as I mentioned before, Inner Circle, we'll just go to the Inner Circle special rule. Inner Circle, right here, on page 28, says a model with a special rule of Inner Circle, has a Fearless and Preferred Enemy Against Chaos Space Marines. So, that's great. So he has Preferred Enemy Against Space Marines as well. And he's a Psychic Mastery Level 3. As you can see here. Psychic Mastery Level 3. So that's pretty cool. And this is coming at 140 points. Oh, sorry, 145 points. Basically, he is, uh, he is excellent. You know, I, I would highly recommend including Ezekiel in your army. For 145 points, that's a great HQ anti-psyker. And Ezekiel always knows the Mind Worm Psychic Power. He may generate two more powers from the Divination, Pyromancy, Telepathy, and Telekinesis Disciplines. And I'll just double check what his Mind Worm Psychic Power does. Mind Worm Psychic Power. It's a Warp Charge 1 Psychic Power. And it's a Focus Witchfire Power with the following profile. 12 inch range, Strength 4, AP 2, uh, Assault D3, Ignores Cover, Sap Will. Sap will for each unsaved wound. A model suffers from Mind Worm. That model's weapon skill, ballistic skill, initiative, and leadership are reduced to th by three, to a minimum of one for the remainder of the game. So it's great against multi-wound independent characters, for example. Very, very cool. Up next, we have Asmodai. And Asmodai in the previous codex was, I don't believe he was in the previous codex. I believe it's a new model. And he's a kind of a super chaplain. And he is 140 points, as I said. Weapon skill 5, ballistic skill 5, strength toughness 4, 3 wounds, initiative 5, 3 attacks, initiative 10, 3 plus save. So you see his power armor. He has his chapter relic is the Blades of Reason, which is a melee, instant death, and specialist weapon. That's pretty cool. And he has special rules, he's an independent character, he causes fear, he has inner circle once again, and he has a zealot. And his Warlord trait is always the Hunt, which as I mentioned in my previous video, there are new Warlord traits, specifically for the Dark Angels Codex. So the Hunt, every time he kill, if he kills the enemy HQ or enemy Warlord in close combat, he gains an extra victory point. Nothing too special. He has Crozius Arcanum, Frag Grenades, Crack Grenades, and Rosarius. So let's check out what those mean. What I really love about this Codex is that they um, put the page numbers. So Crozius Arcanum is Strength plus 2, AP 4, Melee, and Concussive. So he'll actually be going at Strength 6, that's very nice. And for 140 points, once again, a lot of the, there's going to be a lot of debate on which HQs to take for this Codex. There are a lot of really nice ones. And up next we have Belial. Now Belial, I was really hoping in this Codex that Belial wasn't required to make Deathwing troops. However, that is not the case, as you've probably seen in my previous video. You need Belial to make Deathwing troops, or you need Azrael. And Belial, 
used to be coming in at about 100 and, what was it, 130 points. So he's a very cheap HQ to make Deathwing's troops. He wasn't the best HQ in the game, but for that amount of points, he's excellent and he's a great addition to your army, and he's also a great ally. However, we find that his points have been increased to 190 points base today. And uh, for the new codex, he's pretty much the only the HQ that had his points increased, and he has points increased by 60 points, 50% increase, so that's a lot. Um, his new stat line is slightly different than the old one, weapon skill 6, ballistic skill 5, strength and toughness 4, wounds 3, initiative 5, 3 attacks, leadership 10, 2 blow save, because he's of course in Terminator armor. His board gear, he has Terminator armor, Stormbolter, Teleport Homer, so that means that anybody teleporting near him doesn't, um, doesn't scatter. Uh, chapter Relic is Sword of Silence, so it's the same, I'll just go to, straight to his page. But uh, it's the same profile as the Sword of Silence that I previously mentioned. So it is AP3, Strength of the User, Melee, Fleshbane, Mastercrafted, which isn't bad at all. And it's a Force Weapon, I believe. Mm. I have to double check that. What else does he have? He has Marked for Retribution, so Belial's shooting attacks are precision shooting at a 5 plus. And Tactical Precision means his entire uh, Belial, and any unit com composed entirely of models with the Inner Circle Special Rule that he's joined do not scatter when arriving from Deep Strike, which is great too. So that's great. And he also has the Special Rule's Deathwing Assault and Vengeful Strike, and with Deathwing Assault and Vengeful Strike, essentially, you get to do a really cool thing where at the beginning of the game you, you tell your opponent which ones are going to be deep striking. However, then you get to specialty, you get to note secretly which ones are coming in specifically turn one and which ones are coming in turn two. So it's a really cool uh, tactic depending on the, the situation in the game. And he's also an independent character, of course. So, excellent. That's a great. So 190 points. Uh, again, if you want to take um, Deathwing, which I love Deathwing, if you want to take them as troops, which I recommend because your other options are just scouts or tactical, you have to take Belial or Azrael. I prefer Belial because he's slightly cheaper. And he is a he is also a force to be reckoned with. Azrael is great too, but Belial is also pretty sweet. And they have the awesome new model. If you want to see an unboxing of the new model, check out my other video and expect a painting tutorial for Belial in the short term. Of course, after Belial, of course, we have Samael, which his special thing is he makes Ravenwing troops because he's the Ravenwing boss coming in at 200 points. Uh, Samuel actually had a small increase in the old codex. He was 205 points. Now he's 200 points. He of course has power armor, bolt pistol, frag and grenades, teleport homer. And his Raven, his new relics are he has adamant, adamantine mantle which grants Samuel the Eter eternal warrior special rule which is excellent. Uh, due to the bike alone, his toughness is increased now to 5 permanently, so we'd only have to worry about strength 10 weapons to begin with, but it is nice having Eternal Warrior. His other relics are Corvex, which is a jet bike fitted with a plasma cannon and a twin link storm bolter. Night Halo, which grants Samuel a 4 plus invul save, and if Samuel is riding in Saber Claw, instead grants the land speeder a 4 plus invul save, so that's great. So you can put your Samuel in a land speeder and then get the land speeder 4 plus invul save and he has eternal warrior so that makes him really sweet at 200 points and finally the raven sword which is the strength of his user so strength 4 ap2 and it is melee and master crafted as you can see there's an awesome picture of samuel Next, we have a uh, company master. So just a simply, this guy right here. Company master, as seen the one from Dark Vengeance. So company masters uh, also got a decrease. They used to be about 100 points, I believe. Yeah, company masters used to be 100 points. Now they're 90 points, 10% 10, 10 point drop, never bad. Weapon skill six, plus six skill five, strength four, toughness four, wounds three, initiative five, attacks three. You'll see that consistently among most of the HQs. Leadership 10, three plus save. And what's interesting is that, uh, of course, he's Inner Circle, and he has a Power Armor, Bolt Pistol, Chain Sword, Frag grenade, Grenades, Crack Grenades, and Iron Halo. Um, but he may take a Storm Shield at 15 points, a Perfidious Relic of the Unforgiven, 15 points, 
a power armor. He may replace power armor with artificer armor for 20 points, which is pretty sweet, giving him a 2 plus save as opposed to the 3 plus save for only 20 points. That's a really nice upgrade. And replaces power armor, bolt pistol, chain sword, frack grenades with terminator armor, storm bolter, and power sword for 40 points. So, pretty straightforward. So we get up to 130 points, you get a company master in terminator armor. Not bad at all. Pretty good deal. Next we have the interrogator chaplain. If any of you bought the limited version of Dark uh, Dark Vengeance, you'll know a lot about this guy. He comes in at 110 points, which isn't bad for an interrogator chaplain. His war gear is power armor, bolt pistol, Crozius Arcanum, I mentioned I, what I mentioned earlier, 4 plus in ball. Frag grenades, crack grenades, and Rosarius, once again. Special rules, independent character, inner circle, and zealot. Very cool. And interrogator chaplain power armor may take items from the melee weapons. Uh, in this codex, rather than the, um, the standard way, they just say ranged weapons, melee weapons, and you can choose between them. Pretty sweet. Uh, weapon skill 5, ballistic skill 5, strength toughness 4, wounds 3, initiative 5, attacks 3, leadership 10, 3 plus armor. As I said, pretty standard. After the interrogator chaplain, we have the normal chaplain. And he's basically like the interrogator chaplain, but he's only 90 points. And uh, he doesn't get the, a couple of the relics, basically. He's just kind of the same thing as the interrogator chaplain, minus the relics. Pretty much the same profile. Except only three, two wounds instead of three, and initiative four instead of five. And two attacks instead of three. Yeah, so for 20 points, I'd actually recommend the interrogator chaplain over the chaplain. He's a much better increase for 20 points. You get an extra attack, extra wound, extra initiative, and he gets the relics, which are pretty sweet. Um, up next, we have a librarian. This guy, right here. So you're gonna see the librarian. The librarians, in fact, in my opinion, are actually one of the best upgraded HQs in the new codex. They're very sweet. First of all, they start at 65 points for a librarian. That's great for a level one psyker. Not bad at all. Uh, it comes with exactly what you see here. Uh, power armor, bolt pistol, force weapon, frag grenades, crack grenades, psychic hood. So of course, he'll screw over your opponent when trying to make psychic tests. And you can use divination, pyromancy, telepathy, telekinesis. Pretty straightforward stuff. Uh, special rules, independent character, inner circle, psychic master level one. However, you can upgrade him to a psychic master level two for 35 points. So for 100 points, you get a level two psyker. And now in the old codex, the Librarian alone was 120 points, and now you get a level 2 Psyker for 100 points, or a level 1 Psyker for 65 points. He makes a great secondary HQ. In my opinion, he might be the best secondary HQ you have. Just stick him in a small squad and let him just Psychic Hood everything, and that'd be amazing. For 65 points, he can't go wrong at all. Um, up next, we have a Tech Marine. Now, Tech Marines in the previous Codex could be didn't really take up any Force Organization chart, but now they've been officially moved to the HQs, and they also start at 50 points, which is a great price. Um, the Tech Marines in the previous Codex were 75 points, so a 25 point, uh, one third price decrease, not bad at all. And they come with Artificer Armor, Bolt Pistol, so they have a two plus save. Bolt Pistol, Servo Arm, Frag Grenades, Crack Grenades. Their stat line is basically all just the standard Marine, 4 4 4 4 4 1 4 1 8, but only Leadership 8. Uh, special rules, they shall know no fear, blessing of the Omnissiah, Bol bolster defenses, grim resolve, and independent character. I'll just look up the rules specifically now. So tech marines. Um, blessing of the Omnissiah. In each of your shooting phases, instead of firing his weapons, the Tech Marine may choose to repair a single friendly vehicle that he is in base contact with or barked upon. To repair a vehicle, roll a d6 and add the following modifiers where applicable. Each servitor with a servo arm in his unit, plus one. The Tech Marine has a servo harness, plus one. If the result is five or more, you may restore a hull point lost early in the battle or repair a weapon destroyed or immobilized result suffered earlier in the battle. Not bad. Effective immediately. Bolster defenses. After deployment, but before scout redeployments and infiltrate deployments, nominate one piece of terrain in your deployment zone. The terrain pieces cover 
the train pieces cover save is increased by one for the duration of the game to a maximum of three plus. So that's great. If you were running a bunch of, if you're running against a bunch of AP2 or AP3 weapons, you can stick your guys in cover and get a three plus cover save. Never wrong with that. And the servitors have a special rule called mine lock. Unless it includes a tech marine, an unengaged unit that contains at least one model with a special rule, must roll a d6 at the start of the turn. On a roll of 4 plus, there's no effect. On a roll of 1, 2, or 3, the unit is mine locked until the start of the following turn. A mine locked unit may not voluntarily move, shoot, or charge. So, interesting. So, once again, a tech marine, another very cheap HQ choice. If you're running a lot of tanks, you may want to take a tech marine. Because starting at 50 points, you really can't go wrong for that price. And servitors are 10 points each. And finally, we just have the command squads. There's the, I'll show you here. There's the command squad, a Deathwing command squad right here, and the Ravenwing command squad. And these are the new models that you've seen. Again, for an unboxing for the Deathwing command squad, check out my other video. Uh, command squads start at 100 points and they have a variety of options. Deathwing command squads start at 220 points, but they have a lot of really cool options as well. And the Ravenwing command squad starts at 120 points. So for a command squad, you get uh, you have five veterans in a squad, and one veteran may take a banner from the following list. So you can get a company standard, a revered standard, Dark Angels chapter banner. I will go over the banners in, in future uh, videos. You can upgrade one to a company champion, or you can um, you can upgrade one to an apothecary. And the apothecary, of course, will give them feel no pain, a five plus, which is pretty sweet. And variety, they basically take any gun that they want, melt the guns, combi flamers, lightning claws, power fist, pretty standard stuff. The Deathwing are pretty uh, similar. You can upgrade one to a Deathwing apothecary for 30 points. Uh, you can take a bunch of banners for the basically same thing, and they have access to the same weapons. So the commanders are pretty similar. And same with the Raven Wing. The special rules are Dacian Lone of Fear, Grim Resolve, Hit and Run, Scouts and Skilled Rider. And they have access to um, one Raven Wing. Black Knight may take a banner from the following list. So again, I will go over these banners in future videos. And one Raven Wing. Black Knight may replace a Plasma Talon with a Ravenwing Grenade Launcher. So that's not bad at all. You get a Grenade Launcher in the end. But yeah, pretty stuff. Uh, pretty straightforward stuff. So that's about it. So as I said, for your HQ slots, you actually have a lot of choices to go from. From the really heavy hitting Azrael or Belial to the really cheap Librarian. You may want to run a combination of these guys and see how they do, but there are a lot of choices to to choose from, and depending on what kind of troops you want, you may just have to choose a specific one. I love Deathwing, so that was me, Azrael, or Belial, and I've already purchased Belial, so I'm going to field Belial. If you like Ravenwing, you want to run Samuel. Uh, maybe a Samuel uh, Interrogator Chaplain combination actually might be pretty nasty. So that's my review of the HQ. So overall, as I said, almost all of them actually had a great decrease in points and an increase in power, so that's awesome. The HQs got buffed, minus Belial, who went up by 50%. Kind of sucks, especially if you want to run Deathwing, or if you want to run them as an attachment, it's a little bit of, more of a tax. But they're uh, pretty powerful guys, and I think there's going to be a lot of great choices. I don't know which ones right now will be overpowered, because I'm just getting my first impressions of the Codex. But I think uh, it's going to be a really cool Codex, and I think it'll be uh, a lot of fun to play on the tabletop. So that's my review of the HQs. I think that they're really nice. And uh, stay tuned for my review of the Elites. So until next time, this is Jay saying... Happy painting, everyone.